another typical summer afternoon in Texas. Cumulus up there at about 4,000 feet. And let's take a look at it on the satellite photo. There it is. The tropical moisture flowing northward and embedded within that, the sea breeze. Located right there, just passing Houston at this hour as we record this and approaching parts of northern Louisiana. Some evidence of convective cloud debris up here in northwest Texas. And other than that, don't really see a whole lot there. The surface chart showing the polar front starting to become a little bit more bold and aggressive, entering the northwestern states right there. We were seeing lots of 90s in parts of Oregon and Washington. It looks like that's died off quite a bit, and that's the leading edge of that cold front. And a second front from about Kansas City to Chicago and back into New England. Some very mild air back behind that 70s, but we get up to the 80s in Minnesota and the Dakotas. And Montana still enduring some very hot weather. Today, Missoula, Montana, expected to get up near 90 degrees. And if they reach that, that would be 20 days in a row of 90 degree weather. And that would break records going back to the early 20th century. The Gulf is open in Texas. There's that southerly flow helping to support that sea breeze. And the conveyor belt of moisture goes all the way up into the Midwest states. And the monsoon there in Arizona, lots of dew points in the mid-60s, and even 69 there at Phoenix. And we're seeing 60-degree dew points all the way west towards Blythe, California. Well, big news from Europe, floods in parts of Germany, Luxembourg, Belgium, and even the Netherlands. That's a look at some of it right there from yesterday. The radar in Europe is really not that great, but let's check out the synoptic scale picture. This is going back to the 13th, and what we see here is a large cold air mass centered over southern France. And wrapped around that is a warm axis that kind of rides through the Balkans and up towards Poland and the North Sea. So what happens is when we get cyclogenesis in this area right here in Germany, you see that come together, we end up with isentropic lift over the cold air. Remember the cold air is right there. If we bring that moisture and warm air westward, it rides up over the cold air and we get overrunning or isentropic lift. And to a certain extent, that's what caused a lot of these showers and thunderstorms that you see right here wrapping around the backside and those kind of trained over that area right around this time here that would be yesterday the 14th and the QPF projected precipitation totals you can see how they stack up kind of in a cyclonic curl in western Germany Belgium and Luxembourg there these amounts they peak at about 100 millimeters, which is going to be about four inches. Now, that doesn't sound like very much in the southern U.S. However, they're not really accustomed to heavy rainfall like we see here. And this is a look at the upper dynamics cutoff flow in southern France. And we run that forward. This is just pretty much slinging the warm air westward into that flood area. So I think a good takeaway from this is if you're north of a cutoff low and it has access to rich tropical air, you're probably going to get some heavy rain. And here's the precipitable water. That's all the moisture out ahead of it from Italy up towards the Czech Republic, Poland. You see it wrap around there. And that brings us to the current day, Friday, and we can see that things have kind of broken up a little bit. And here's what we're looking at for today with the current model run. Serbia, Hungary, looking at some heavy convective storms in that region. 
little MCS moving westward towards the Adriatic Sea, and then redevelopment with afternoon heating across the Serbia, Croatia, Hungary region. Some good storms there. And depending on how that works out, there could be some localized flooding with those storms. However, big Atlantic high moving in from the west. And that should help clear things out a little bit and push the heavy weather eastward. And one other feature of note here is the very hot temperatures in Belarus and the Baltics up to about 85, yeah, about 85 degrees in that region. Some, they've been enduring quite a bit of heat out there in Eastern Europe. And you can see Saturday back up to the upper 80s in that region. And that's going to shift eastward towards the Black Sea, moving into Ukraine by Sunday. And then that should head into the Caspian Sea region. A little bit of a heat wave there for next week. Anyway, let's return back home, look at Arizona and New Mexico. The monsoon is continuing. We're getting the expected showers and storms on the Mogollon Rim. Also some convection showing up south of Tucson towards Nogales, Bisbee, and Douglas. Little convective cluster in that region. And we'll check out the high resolution rapid refresh model. Looks like it is capturing that detail down there around Nogales. There's the storms developing on the Mogollon Rim, moving towards the Phoenix area around dusk. That may be enough to kick up a little bit of dust through that region there. If I was going to photograph some dust, I would kind of be on the lookout there in Phoenix. I don't know how dry it is as far as the ground cover, but yeah, that little cluster moves southwestward overnight and dies out. And then just checking out tomorrow. Looks like a repeat scenario. California looking very dry. A little bit of smoke from some forest fires there. That's going to be about maybe southeast of Redding. And man, look at that stratocumulus with the post cold frontal air just blasting southward. Oregon continuing to battle those wildfires down there around Lakeview, but we can see further north the marine layer and some of the post frontal air has worked pretty deep into the Willamette Valley and the valleys around Seattle. And there's how that looks around Seattle. You can see the stratocumulus and stratus banked up all the way towards the Cascades and quite a smoke plume over Idaho. Very hot temperatures with smoke in Montana. And unfortunately, it's looking like they are going to remain very hot through most of next week. Very bad news if you're in Montana. Coming down through the central Rockies, not much to talk about there. However, some of that monsoon moisture has made it into that region and even as far west as Ely. So thunderstorms up on the mountains and some of them moving out into the valleys, especially in Colorado. Texas, we've already talked about the sea breeze is on the move from the woodlands out towards south of Shreveport. Doesn't look quite as impressive as it did a couple days ago, but some areas will get some showers. In Arkansas, we have an MCS moving through the north part of the state. That's going to be located right in here. The MCS fallen apart, but we could see some redevelopment around dark. And there's the outflow boundary. Further west, it's a little bit too stable to support convection. But further to the north, we do have a front in place through Kansas and Missouri. Well, kind of an unsettled day there in the Great Lakes region. You can see the cloud shield from that Bear Clinic system down there in the Midwest. That's it right there. And you probably remember the surface analysis had a front running about like that. And we would expect to find a Bear Clinic shield right in this area if we switch over to the infrared. We have to zoom out a little bit to see it, but there it is. That's the Bear Clinic cloud shield and the backside of it forming kind of an S shape. And that can kind of clue you into where the upper level shortwaves are. 
So that would be shortwave supporting that low level system. And down at the surface, there's our fronts and so forth. Down to the south, some thunderstorms going up there with the rich tropical moisture flowing northward. And last but not least, the southeast U.S. looking rather calm compared to previous weeks. So a very good chance we have an upper level high covering that region. Great time to take a look at the upper level dynamics, the 500 millibar heights and vorticity. And yeah, there's our high right there nosing into northern Florida and keeping the convection shut down. Not so much in Texas, a little bit of troughing working into that area, and the height weaknesses across Texas are what's allowing for some of that thunderstorm activity along the sea breeze. Some ridging through the North Plains, that's adding to the heat there in Montana and keeping a lot of the convection shut down except over the mountains where they indeed are getting some due to the monsoon moisture and the orographic lift. And looking out on the west coast, trough moving inland, that's probably supporting the frontal system out to the west. So I might expect to see a little bit of cyclogenesis in this area. We're not really guaranteed that, but that would be something to watch. And you can see that wave moving up into southern Oregon tonight. And it looks like it actually flattens out as it climbs that ridge tomorrow morning. And it's pretty much lost. And that, in fact, yeah, that upper level high, look at that thing flexing its muscle. See, we go from 594 or 591 today and builds right up to 597. And of course, the next step is 600, which is very, very, very rare. So this is quite a strong high here. We're looking at the charts for Sunday evening. Do we see a 600? No. That would be a rarity, so we don't have that. But of course, this does confirm it's going to be very hot in the central and northern Rockies. And yeah, this feature here moving into Texas, where did that come from? Oh, yeah, that's probably that little piece of energy rounding the top of the ridge. Now, actually, yeah, we're looking at two different systems. But anyway, the stuff up to the northeast, I think that's it right there. Yeah, there it goes. It shears off Sunday and moves southward into Oklahoma and Texas for midweek. So that's definitely going to produce additional showers and thunderstorms in Texas and Oklahoma and keep the temperatures down. But the big picture, this big ridge, that means a lot of places in the U.S., especially west of the Mississippi River, are going to be very warm. And the 21st, that's usually when stations across the U.S. reach their highest daily maximums for the year. So that's the atmospheric peak of temperatures and then the oceanic peak of temperatures hits during the last week of August and the first week of September. So a little bit more heat heading our way. And that's all for our Friday edition. Occasionally, we select some lucky Patreon supporters to get some free items. Patrice Brown and Jason Rourke, if you're watching, you've been selected for a free weather graph chart. That's a laminated weather forecasting reference chart that's great for the forecast desk. That's to a US address only, and if you don't like that, you can exchange it for a voucher at weathergraphics.com. Patrice Brown and Jason Rourke send an email to service desk at weathergraphics.com to get that arranged. Anyway, we'll be back again Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.